Bangor. From the great north woods to the rockbound coast and streaming live in HD worldwide at foxbangor.com, more people choose Good Morning Maine. Today on Good Morning Maine, an outbreak of illness is causing more Maine schools to remain closed today. Plus controversy in Bucksport, where officials have decided to remove a nativity scene. And five local families go on a shopping spree thanks to Bangor Police. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Craig Colson. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Everybody is talking about the big storm that's moving into the area. What are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. Something, something right, I'm just writing my grocery list oh, and trying are. not to think about it. <laughs> That's what everybody's doing. To prepare for the storm, get some good food. You can just hunker down. And Craig's and making it. fun of me over here. <laughs> it's, it's still, if it's still a normal Friday over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. The powerful winter storm that has caused so many problems elsewhere is now at our doorstep. It's pushing its way into Maine this morning, and by later this afternoon, we'll be all be seeing the first significant snowfall of the season. According to the Maine Emergency Management Agency, the potential exists for over a foot of snow in the foothills and mountains. The Bangor area is also expected to receive several inches of snow, while coastal areas could also receive a messy mix with rain. The storm is also expected to bring strong wind gusts of up to 45 miles per hour on the coast and 30 miles per hour inland. All state offices will also close at 1 o'clock today, and Governor Mills strongly urges all people to drive cautiously while making their way home. Utility, utility crews are also preparing for any outage, outages that include central main power, which has extra workers lined in tonight. Those are line workers and tree crews to respond to any power outages. So let's working hope, overtime. Yeah, let's hope that's not the case. It is a heavy wet snow that they're right. saying and that has a tendency to cling to the branches out there, which yeah. makes them even heavier. So we could have some problems. So but we know the drill right. here, you know, don't park in under any trees if you can help it. Yeah. Drive yeah. safely. Don't drive if you don't have to. But, right. you know, it's just a good old Maine winter storm. Yeah. Yeah. For more on what we can expect today, let's turn things over to Devin Biggs. All righty, thank you very much. Happy Friday. We have winter storm warnings in effect until Sunday morning at around 1 a.m. Our next system is going to be moving in and giving us some problems with some decent snowfall on the way. You may notice, so there's some purple indicated here. Not right there is a small crack, or a winter weather advisory, excuse me. Or further off towards the north, there is a winter storm watch. The reason why I almost said a small crowd advisory, because there is some uh, alerts along the coast, but not small crowd advisory. We do have a gale warning in effect until Saturday at 4 p.m. And there is that winter weather advisory up until 7 a.m. As we head towards your Saturday for a few areas, and I'll mainly be up for some heavy wet snow in some areas. And Sunday at around midnight, so the expiration times will vary in a few spots. But otherwise, so we're quiet for now. All this right here is tracking from the southwest, going toward the north and east. Clouds are currently moving in, and our next system will arrive as we head towards the afternoon period. Here is the bigger picture. We're watching all of this right here, and it's moving in, and it's going to take its time. But again, later this afternoon, this will begin to move in with some decent accumulations I'll take place since we had towards the weekend. Futurecast moving forward again. This pushes it in a little bit later. I know late afternoon this will move in. Once it gets going, some heavy snow will be possible in a few areas. And maybe it'll switch over to a little bit of a rain snow mix from time to time as you head along the coast with temperatures that'll be just a little bit warmer. As for the wind, it'll be out of the northeast from time to time, reaching up to around 20 miles per hour sustained. Gusts up to 30, maybe 40 miles per hour. Cannot be ruled out. And there are only forecasts for the rest of the morning and afternoon period. Cloudy skies, the snow begins later this afternoon. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. All right, thank you, Devin. Well, the deadly storm has been crossing the country all week and is now taking aim at the northeast with snow, ice, and rain. Meanwhile, in the deep south, we're getting new images from the area's hardest hit by a tornado outbreak. But we begin with a concern right now, which is the morning commute in some areas. ABC's Morgan Norwood has the latest. The holiday travel rush kicks off today with the massive storm impacting tens of millions of Americans. Heavy snow, rain and ice coating highways across dozens of states. Tens of thousands of customers were without power overnight in Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Maryland and Virginia. And parts of New York and New England could see up to two feet of snow, the first significant snowfall of the season in many areas. Because people are not used to it, they think they can drive as fast as they usually can. They can't. So we have a lot of people that are off the road, so disabled vehicles. It comes as AAA predicts an additional 2 million drivers on the road this holiday season compared to last year. Oh my God. That same system produced a days long tornado outbreak in the South, 56 twisters since Tuesday, killing at least three people. 
Multiple homes were damaged here in Clark County, Mississippi, and in Louisiana. A tornado lifted this home off its foundation. Everything's gone. In St. Petersburg, Florida, a twister slammed a tree into this daycare. Inside, half-eaten snacks on the table and those tree branches shooting down like spikes through the classroom's roof. The children had left the room only seconds before the tornado hit. Here's the incredible thing. The owner says the kids were eating snacks in this room. They left to use the bathroom before coming back to that same room for nap time where the beds are, are were already set up. And in those moments that they were gone, that's when the tree came crashing down. No one in the daycare was injured. With snow in the forecast, the main DOT is boosting its efforts to recruit more help. The department will be putting out more hiring ads on social media in the coming weeks to help fill plow truck driver openings this winter. DOT is offering increased pay, competitive benefits, and on-the-job training for new hires. They say they're ready for the upcoming storm, but with more than 8,000 miles of roads to clear, they will take all the help they can get. Well, in other news, a man is in custody after an incident in which the alleged victim says a gun was pointed at him. According to Penobscot County Sheriff's Corporal Ryan Fitch, a man called 911 to report someone had appointed a gun at him during a physical altercation. Deputies responded to the scene where Corporal Fitch says those present did not cooperate with authorities. A Maine State Police K-9 team was called in to search for the gun, but it wasn't located. The sheriff's office says ultimately 58-year-old Jeffrey Lewis, who is from the Glenburn area, was arrested on assault and drug possession charges. No one was seriously injured during the incident. A Brownville woman has been arrested for drug trafficking. Last night, deputies from the Piscataquis County Sheriff's Office executed a search warrant at a residence in Brownville. Upon search, they found methamphetamine, fentanyl, along with a firearm and stolen property, and $2,200 in suspected drug proceeds. 35-year-old Kristen Mathewson of Brownville has been arrested and charged with unlawful trafficking and scheduled drugs, possession of a firearm by a prohibited person, and theft. She is currently on probation for a previous drug trafficking conviction and is being held at the Piscataquis County Jail. The Ellsworth Police Department is trying to find the rightful owner of a large sum of money. Officials say it was found December 11th along the sidewalk near the Circle K store. The police department hopes to hear from the person who lost it. You'll have to identify the amount of money and what it was in when it was discovered. School systems around the state of Maine are feeling the impact from an outbreak of illness. Just this past week, schools in the Cumberland area switched to remote learning due to student and staff illnesses. Several schools on Mount Desert Island will also remain closed today, where they've been dealing with an outbreak of the flu, COVID-19 and RSB. That includes Bar Harbor Elementary School, where more than 20 percent of the students and staff were out sick this week. Bangor has been dealing with its own problems. Bangor High School nurse Heather Haskins says it's been a really difficult year containing the flu. It's been pretty busy this year with the flu. There's been a lot of illness. There's been the common cold. There's been the flu. We've had some COVID. We've had some RSV. Uh, so we're getting hit with a lot this season. According to Haskins, the school department looks at absent at, looks at absences by illnesses when determining its next steps and says they're not near the current threshold of 15% outages with only two schools near the thresh threshold. TSA agents in Portland at the jet port caught someone trying to travel with some weapons. Officers detected this homemade firearm on a, in a man's carry-on bag. They also found a hatchet in the bag. Portland police responded and confiscated the firearm. This is the third firearm detection at Portland Jetport this year. U.S. Senator Susan Collins announced yesterday that the housing authorities in Ellsworth and Brewer will receive roughly $260,000 from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. The money comes through the Resident Opportunity, Opportunity and Self-Sufficiency Service Coordinator Program. In a statement, the senator said, quote, The dedicated staff at housing authorities throughout Maine work hard to link seniors, individuals with disabilities, and low-income individuals and families with access to an array of programs that help them in improve their living conditions and achieve economic independence, unquote. The program, the purpose of the program is to help residents of public housing make progress towards economic and housing self-sufficiency by removing the educational, professional and health barriers they face. 
And there's a lot of those barriers. It's hard to find sure. housing and transition into new housing. Yeah, it really is. Well, the time is now 8.09. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, the removal of a nativity scene with a decades-long tradition has caused upset in Bucksport. But first, another check of that messy forecast. We can expect for afternoon snow today and perhaps a rain along the coast. The highs will be around 35 degrees. The wind and snow will continue tonight into tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow, another rainy, messy, snowy day. The highs around 35 degrees. Hello, Maine. This is Steve McKay. Not sure what the weather will be in your neck of the woods, but there's a 100% chance of Luke showing up near you. Next Home Experience is listing and selling homes throughout Maine. Get looped and get sold with Next Home Experience. Nearly all commercial vehicles carry big insurance policies. So if you're hurt by one of these box trucks or by a garbage truck or by any kind of commercial vehicle, you may have a big case worth big money, but they don't just give that money up. You need someone who's going to fight for it. That's exactly why you need to call the twos. I'm Jim with Lowry and Associates. If you've been hurt by any commercial truck, call the twos. We win for you. Hurt by a commercial truck? Call the twos. Call 222-2222. Whether you're thinking of getting your first tattoo or building onto your collection of skin art. Disconnected Tattoo and Art Company in Ellsworth provides the safest and most comfortable tattoo and piercing experience. At Disconnected Tattoo, we'll combine your vision with our art to create something special that will last the test of time. Don't trust your personal body art to anyone else. Call Disconnected Tattoo today to schedule your consultation. Or check out our Facebook page. Disconnected Tattoo and Art Company in Ellsworth. Looking for your dream home? Contact a Next Homey today and see what's available right now. Sellers, get ready to get looped and get sold. With Next Home Experience, we have your buyers. You ain't living your best life? My best life is when I have dragons to slay. We're going to see heavy rains and wide path of destruction. It's raining frogs! I'm sorry, did you say frogs? That was even weirder than the volcano. Nothing is as weird as lava at mini golf. Wait around a minute. Something awful's bound to happen. 911 Lone Star, season premiere, January 17th on Fox. Welcome back, everyone. Well, nearly a dozen people were rushed to the hospital after falling ill from a gas leak in their apartment. Officials in Lawrence, Massachusetts, say the top floor of the apartment complex had faulty furnaces, faulty stoves, missing carbon monoxide detectors, and no smoke alarms. The 11 residents of the top floor were all taken to the hospital to be analyzed, but they are expected to be okay. Some residents of Bucksport are upset about the town's decision to remove its nativity scene. Our Matthew Jaronsik has more on the story. It kind of expresses all the, uh, all the freedoms that we exist, you know, that we have to promote ourselves or promote our faith, and it's not in a pushy manner. That is one reaction a Bucksport resident had after learning that their beloved nativity scene that has been put in town for dozens of years during the holiday season was taken down. Of course, the nativity scene has a very personal significance to me, but also it's part of the heritage of Bucksport and of America. The decision was made by the town after the main chapter of the Freedom from Religious Foundation requested to put its Bill of Right banner around the same spot as the nativity scene. I contacted the town's attorney to find out what, le what the town's legal obligations were in regard to this request and learned that um, if the town had up a display that was considered to be um, religious in nature, that it, it had to uh, allow for a secular type of display as well. If displayed, the banner would be celebrating the bill's adoption, showing America's founding fathers and the Statue of Liberty looking down at the Bill of Rights. And while many residents are upset about the current situation, Mr. Waddell tells us that there is a solution to this problem. They may decide to give it to a church, and they may, that church may, ask the Jed Prouty House behind us to put it on their private property. That would be a win-win situation. 
However, with this topic being discussed at Thursday's town council meeting, Lassard is proposing an idea that would work best for both parties. Keeps the manger, puts the manger back in its location on the fountain and designates another area on Main Street um, near the Veterans Memorial Park. It's a space for private holiday displays. Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7 and Fox 22. Well, as she said, she was planning to bring that up, a possible solution at last night's meeting. We haven't heard back from them yet. We'll have to follow up on that and see what they decided. Seems like some sort of compromise could be reached. Yeah, it's nice when they can do that. Right, right. Well, time now is 8.15. Coming up after the break, the Bangor Police Department held a Shop with a Cop event last night at Target. We'll check out the good cause they were supporting. Plus, the Milo Food Pantry is giving away special gifts to those who visit the pantry through the month of December. Details on these stories and more when we return. LiftMaster is the number one professionally installed garage door opener. Can alert you if you left it open and let you close it for most anywhere in the world. And where's the best place to get your LiftMaster? From PDQ Door. PDQDoor.com. Choosing Miracle Ear was a great decision. Like when I decided to host family movie nights. Miracle Ear made it easy. I just booked an appointment and a certified hearing care professional evaluated my hearing loss and helped me find the right device calibrated to my unique hearing needs. Now I enjoy every moment, the quiet ones and the loud ones. Make a sound decision. Call now and book your free hearing evaluation. Raoul's Garage has been serving customers in the greater Dover Foxcroft region since 1946. Our goal is not just selling you a vehicle, but also giving you quality service to maintain your vehicle at peak performance. Browse our inventory online or in person. Whether it's a car, truck, or SUV, we can put you in the vehicle that is right for you. Sales, service, and parts. Raoul's Garage, doing business the right way every day. Friday nights are about to get wild for basketball fans. Friday Night Fast Break is your source for everything that is Maine High School basketball, highlights, and local analysis. It's the only show that hits every corner of Maine's hardwood hoop landscape, high school, college, and professional. Join us Friday night during basketball season for Friday Night Fast Break on Fox 22 News at 10. Brought to you by Coastal Auto Parts, your local Napa Auto Parts dealer. With 29 locations, owned and operated by a Maine family that cares. LiftMaster is the number one professionally installed garage door opener. Can alert you if you left it open and let you close it for most anywhere in the world. And where's the best place to get your LiftMaster? From PDQ Door. PDQDoor.com. Welcome back, everyone. Bangor police officers helped spread some holiday cheer last night offering the chance to shop with a cop at Target. The annual event pairs officers with five deserving families as they go on a shopping spree. Sergeant Jason McCambly says the officers look forward to the event every year. It's a little bit of public relations to see that we're people. Uh, we can be nice. We're not here to take away your freedom or give you a ticket or something like that. And yeah, help shop. Brings yeah. out the kid in you. A shop with a cop is made possible thanks to a generous donation by the owner of CNL Aviation Group, Chris Kilgower, who says it feels good to be able to give back to the community. It's just it's great to see the kids being excited and happy, and maybe they wouldn't be able to get presents if it wasn't for us. So it's it's great to be able to do that. Well, the gifts were all brought back to the Bangor Police Station, uh, the station, to be expertly wrapped and then delivered back to the families. I wonder if the chief pitched in on the wrapping duties. <laughs> I'll have to check in with Mark. I'm not very good at wrapping. Yeah. Well, Dyer's Hope House Food Pantry is offering a special gift to those who visit through the month of December. The Food Pantry is giving away homemade stockings with small gifts inside. Two local quilting groups donated their time and materials. Look at that. That is beautiful. They created some stockings. And Trelba Rollins quilted some pot holders to fill the stockings with as well. Worcester's Wild Blueberries chipped in too, donating 100 small bottles of their wild blueberry honey. Our board of directors decided that uh, we'd make this a little bit small but special effort uh, for the clients this year. Uh, we put out the feelers around town and around the region, and people stood up and uh, they made actually made the stockings. Even better knocks on the door. Yeah. 
The Dyers Hope House Food Pantry is open Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. So go get your special Christmas gift. Those are beautiful. Very nice. Spreading some cheer with the less fortunate out there. Absolutely. That's really what the season's all about. Absolutely. Well, the time is now 819. Time to get a full look at our forecast. Snow is on the way, folks. All righty, thank you very much. We do have winter storm warnings in effect until 1 a.m. as we head towards Sunday. A winter storm watch up until 4 p.m. Sunday for areas further to the north. That purple shade right there is a winter weather advisory that is up. And the expiration times will vary. Some places will expire Saturday morning at around 7 a.m. While areas further down toward the south and west will expire at around midnight as we head towards Sunday morning as well. And, of course, gale warning is also in effect until Saturday evening. So we'll be watching this for a while yet with snow that will begin to move in. Later on this afternoon, the evening time frame and a rain snow mixture that will be possible along the coast. Hence why that cutoff there with the alerts. But here's the system right here. With It's really getting its act together really good. It's going to be tracking off towards the north and east as the day progresses on. Hitting later this afternoon about 3, 4 o'clock or so. Maybe even a little later than that. And then, of course, later overnight, a lot of snow on the way. If you have any overnight activities, I'd probably cancel those and just stay home. Because the snow will get heavy from time to time and accumulate pretty decently. So Futurecast currently moves. Moving forward, though, increasing clouds, pretty much a cloudy sky all day long. Later this afternoon, the evening time frame, the snow gets going. And it'll be heavy at times, too, becoming a mess with travel, with gusty winds blowing that snow around. And, of course, notice that cutoff. A rain snow mixture cannot be ruled out for areas along the coast. And then on land as well, Saturday, we might see that rain snow line moving a little farther to the north with temperatures that will get above freezing, but most areas should stay as snow overall. And we'll still see some snow hanging around as we head towards early Sunday morning. A lot of snow falling away. We're going to run this all the way through the entire snow events, so basically now all the way through Sunday and early Monday morning. Some areas could see up close to 10 inches in a few areas, maybe close to 6 to 10 inches, ranging from Augusta to Bangor. Lesser amounts to the south and some areas getting close to a foot, like over Millinocka and the Greenfield area. So plenty of areas to watch with this heavy snow that looks to move in soon. But gusty winds we're also watching out for, reaching out around 25 miles per hour at times. And along the coast, look at this, 40, 45 mile per hour winds cannot be ruled out in a few spots as we head towards Saturday morning. And we'll keep that wind going again as we head towards later into that morning period for you Saturday. Wave heights are up as a result of all this. 9 to 12 feet according to some of the buoys closer toward land. 14 feet according to another buoy. So this is why we do have gale warnings in effect along the coast. We're average highs 34 degrees and we're going to be very stable reaching for the lower to middle 30s for the next several days which is actually very close to average. So overall very quiet weather pattern in the temperature department moving forward but of course we do have that active storm moving in later on today. Middle 30s today afternoon snow showers so that northeast wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. As for tonight lower 30s snow likely some blowing snow will be expected and maybe to stay home tonight and be careful if you do have to be out the northeast wind getting up to about 30 miles per hour. Moving ahead towards tomorrow, mid-30s, rain and snow likely. Northeast wind gusting up to around 25 miles per hour. And many areas could see wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour further down toward the south. Here's a look at your extended forecast. The rain and snow chances pretty much continue all the way through parts of the day on Monday with temperatures that will be in the middle 30s overall. We finally start to dry out on Tuesday. We'll be partly cloudy with highs in the mid-30s. Interest rates are on the rise and making waves in the real estate market. Buying or selling? You need a navigator. I'm Holly Taylor. Come to the one who gets it done. Holly Taylor, Dot Realtor. Mmm, taking control of your mornings with what makes you happy. McDonald's has options to make mornings happy every day. Now, get a sausage McMuffin, sausage McGriddles, or hash browns. Get any two for $3. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm Jim with Lowry & Associates. Winning car accident cases is what we do. Check out a few of our big wins. I broke my wrist and they got me $185,000. What did the twos do for you? I injured my hip and they got me $260,000. What did the twos do for you? I needed multiple surgeries and Lowry & Associates got me $350,000. Call the twos. We win for you. If you hurt in an accident, what do you do? Call 2 2 22 Bangor Brewer Bowling Lanes on Wilson Street in Brewer, featuring 24 lanes of candlepin bowling and a big arcade room where kids can win great prizes. Glow Bowling on Saturday nights from 7 until closing. Bring your entire family a fun entertainment for all ages. So I definitely have a couple of favorite Christmas traditions. The first is just watching my favorite Christmas movies, whether it's Die Hard, Elf, 
home alone or Christmas vacation, my husband and I and our stepdaughters as well, we like to just kick back and watch our favorite movies. The other thing too is with my family, the Jones family, uh, my mom and dad, my two sisters, my brother-in-laws and my husband, we like to do our own secret Santa. So everybody picks a name and that's who you shop for that season. So Christmas for us is just all about being together and maybe a few surprises as well. Homes are selling in a single day. The real work happens well before. I'm Polly Taylor, and I have the expertise to guide you through your home improvements. Come to the one who gets it done. HollyTaylor.Realtor. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine, and now for your national news. Nearly 18 months after its formation, the January 6th House Select Committee is wrapping up the bulk of its work. It's releasing its final report, placing former President Trump at the center of the conspiracy to overturn the 2020 election results. Fox's Madeline Rivera reports from Washington. In his farewell speech to Congress, Republican Adam Kinzinger spared no words against his party. GOP members have disavowed Kinzinger and fellow outgoing Republican Liz Cheney for serving on the January 6th committee. The once great party of Lincoln, Roosevelt and Reagan has turned its back on the ideals of liberty and self-governance. Instead, it has embraced lies and deceit. The committee is getting ready to release its final report next week. After more than 1,000 interviews and through the course of 10 public hearings, the panel laid out what it calls a multi-pronged campaign by former President Trump and his allies to secure him a second term. I think that they uh, conducted the business with the seriousness it deserves. Uh, the fact that it's about our national security, it's about our democracy. Although the committee hasn't finalized criminal referrals and other recommendations, Kinzinger has made it clear he believes Trump committed a crime. We've made that clear. He knew what was happening prior to January 6th. Uh, he pressured the Justice Department officials to say, hey, just say the election was stolen and leave the rest to me. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy is vowing to probe the work of the committee once Republicans take back the House next month. And we'd want to get to the bottom. We'd want to not to play politics like the Democrats pick and choose. Chairman Benny Thompson also hasn't ruled out the possibility of releasing new evidence when the committee holds its last public meeting on Monday. In Washington, Malo Rivera, Fox News. Twitter suspends the accounts of several high-profile journalists who cover the social media platform and its new owner, Elon Musk. The journalists work for top news organizations, including CNN, The New York Times, and The Washington Post. Musk accused the reporters of posting private information about his location that he says endangered his family. The suspensions come after a Twitter account that tracked Musk's private jet was permanently banned. The reporters say they were merely reporting on the incident and on Twitter's new policy that prevents the sharing of users' current whereabouts without approval. The Committee to Protect Journalists has raised concerns about those suspensions. We're learning more about the fate of an American citizen freed in a prisoner exchange with Russia on Wednesday night. Fox's Nate Foy has more from Kyiv, Ukraine. As the war in Ukraine grinds on, another American has been freed from Russian captivity. Suwady Murakhazy, a U.S. Air Force veteran, was detained by Russian forces in June. He was allegedly tortured when the Russians found old pictures of him in his military uniform. It's still not clear if he was fighting alongside the Ukrainians or just an American in the wrong place at the wrong time. Despite Russia's propaganda uh, to portray themselves as victims, uh, it's important to remember that Russia is the aggressor here. The prisoner swap comes as Russia is ramping up its air attacks on Ukraine's energy infrastructure, causing massive blackouts throughout the country as the fighting intensifies on the front lines. The commander of the Georgian Legion, considered one of the best fighting units in Ukraine, tells us this is a deliberate tactic by Moscow. It's a revenge because we are winning uh, them uh, at the front lines. But more help could be coming soon. The U.S. reportedly preparing to send the powerful Patriot missile defense system to Ukraine, a move backed by most lawmakers on Capitol Hill. I think it's important that you create a, a virtual iron dome. So a Patriot system is welcome. And most effective right now is being able to attack the uh, 
the missiles that are coming in, cruise missiles and other missiles. Russia issuing a warning to the United States on Thursday, saying if the U.S. sends the Patriot missile defense system to Ukraine, it will be seen as a, quote, provocation. Reporting in Kiev, Ukraine, I'm Nate Foy, Fox News. Still to come here on the second half of our show, we'll get a glimpse of the world's largest menorah in New York. Plus, we'll take a look at your community calendar for the weekend ahead. Back right after this. Did you know that Renewal by Anderson will replace your windows any time of the year and in any weather? Made with our exclusive Fibrix material, which is vastly superior to vinyl, never needs painting, and resists warping and bowing. We custom build your replacement windows in the USA and back them with the nation's best warranty. Call Renewal by Anderson for your free consultation. Don't miss this money-saving deal with great financing. Installation is always included. Call now. Maine's number one Kia dealer, Van Sickle Kia, has you covered. Front wheel drive, all wheel drive, hybrid, or fully electric. Brand new 2023 Kia Sportage, Sorento, Soul, Forte, and more. Check out the all new 2023 Kia Nero Hybrid with 54 MPG Highway or the affordable Sporty Forte with 41 MPG Highway. Plus, get Kia's 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty. The best in the business. The best cars, the best prices, and the best warranty. I'm Peter Van Sickle. I guarantee it. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. Well, today is Friday, December 16th, 2022. It's also National Chocolate Covered Anything Day, a day when we celebrate things that are dipped in chocolate. Chocolate covered egg roll? Sure, I'd try it. <laughs> Sweet and savory. Chocolate covered yeah. shrimp? No. No, no. No, not that. <laughs> yeah. When keep you it, say anything, it it's like, let's Well, that's <laughs> what they say. You know, right. you, obviously, you don't want to put it on spaghetti. Chocolate-covered chocolate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> spaghetti. That yeah. sounds like something out of Elf. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Any maple syrup on your spaghetti. Oh, that was so. disgusting. That was disgusting. What a great movie, though. <laughs> yes. So, anyway. Yep. Well, on this day in history, in 1773, the Boston Tea Party took place as American colonists boarded a British ship and dumped more than 300 chests of tea into the Boston Harbor to protest tea taxes. And hundreds of years later, in 1944, the Battle of the Bulge began in World War II as German forces launched a surprise attack against Allied forces, although the Allies were eventually able to turn the Germans back. A big pivotal battle there. Today's birthdays include veteran TV reporter Leslie Stahl, who is 81, one of my all-time favorites from 60 Minutes and other things. I love 60 Minutes. Singer Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top is 73. It's also the birthday of Pope Francis, who is 85. A lot of influential guys up yeah. there today. Yeah, all sorts of different people. Hopefully they get some things dipped in chocolate. I, if they you like know? it, yeah. Why not? Sounds good. We have to have a dipped in chocolate party where everybody brings their fondue. Sounds who, great. Who stopped doing fondue parties? Hey, you know what? My brother gave me a fondue thing like two years ago. I haven't used it yet. But it's like Fondue a brand new thing. Party. He's like, here you go. Merry Every, Christmas. Everybody it's brings like, their own things yeah. to dip in chocolate. Yeah, it's still sitting in the box. One of these days I'll actually have a party and yeah. we'll dip some things in there chocolate. There you go. There so, you go. That's a funny gift. To bring it camping Matt. sometime. Yeah, good old Matt. <laughs> he, got, he got me one of those... Um, Instapots a couple of years ago. He that's like gives me appliances, and I use the Instapot. That's a good to make one. Some chili and stuff. So. I would love to get it. That's a great gift. Anyway, enough about my my gifts and things like no, that. No, we so, want to hear yeah. more about your appliances. <laughs> oh well, we'll keep going. I plan to be here for a while, so <laughs> okay. we'll, keep, we'll keep sharing with you. I'm an open book. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Good. Good. Well, Devin has the forecast. Yeah. I know I've good day to go home and planning on doing anything with the Instant Pot. We'll dip things in chocolate. Yeah. yeah maybe make a beef stew today. Good day for it. Yeah. Good day for it. Devin has the forecast. All righty, thank you very much. Happy Friday. We have winter storm warnings in effect until Sunday morning at around 1 a.m. Our next system is going to be moving in and giving us some problems with some decent snowfall on the way. You may notice, so there's some purple indicated here. Not right there is a small crack, or a winter weather advisory, excuse me. A little further off towards the north, there is a winter storm watch. The reason why I almost said a small crowd advisory, because there is some uh, alerts along the coast, but not small crowd advisory. We do have a gale warning in effect until Saturday at 4 p.m. And there's that winter weather advisory up 
until 7 a.m. Those will be out towards your Saturday for a few areas. That'll mainly be up for some heavy wet snow in some areas. And Sunday at around midnight, so the expiration times will vary in a few spots. But otherwise, though, we're quiet for now. All this right here is tracking from the southwest going toward the north and east. Clouds are currently moving in, and our next system will arrive as we head towards the afternoon period. Here is the bigger picture. We're watching all of this right here, and it's moving in, and it's going to take its time. But again, later this afternoon, this will begin to move in with some decent accumulations that will take place as we head towards the weekend. Futurecast moving forward. Again, this pushes it in a little bit later. I know late afternoon, this will move in. And once it gets going, some heavy snow will be possible in a few areas. And maybe it's switch order a little bit of a rain snow mix from time to time as you head along the coast with temperatures that'll be just a little bit warmer. As for the wind, it'll be out of the northeast from time to time, reaching up to around 20 miles per hour sustained, goes up to 30, maybe 40 miles per hour, cannot be ruled out. And our only forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period, cloudy skies, the snow begins later this afternoon. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Well, folks in New York City are preparing for Hanukkah with the lighting of the world's largest menorah. The menorah measures 36 feet high and is located on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan. This year is the year of the Hakel, which happens once every seven years, and it makes a special focus on Torah practices and learning as well as on unity. Rabbi Shmuel Boatman explains why this structure is so important. The menorah stands as a symbol of freedom, of inspiration for all people regardless of race and religion and color and creed, especially now, since unfortunately anti-Semitism is on the rise. It's a phenomenon that we never understood will happen in the United States of America in this day and age. Nevertheless, it's a reality that there's a rise in anti-Semitism. The menorah is the answer to that. A smart man once said... Hanukkah officially starts this Sunday, December 18th. All right, now we have all kinds of events coming up this weekend, but you may want to call ahead before you head out because definitely snow might get in the way. Definitely. We've posted a list of the community calendar on our website, foxbangor.com, and I hyperlinked um, the original poster for each event, so make sure to click on it and see um, whoever organized the event if it's still going on. But let's take a look at that community calendar. So starting tonight, Friday, December 16th, the Yarn Arts Club in the Millinocket Memorial Library at 6.30 p.m. Bring a project and settle in for some crafting and a conversation. Coffee and tea provided. The Welcome Winter Celebration at Fields Pond Audubon Center in Holden at 4 p.m. It's a family-oriented celebration of nature in winter, recreating the classic story of the night tree. It's kind of about a winter solstice tree decorating experience. Starting with a read aloud of the story, then creating wildlife-friendly ornaments to decorate your own night tree. Advanced registration is is recommended. And the Mexica Archeo Astronomy Between Space and Time Immersive Planetarium Scenario at the Verse and Power Astronomy Center tonight at 7 p.m. at Umaine Orno. It's illustrating the important role played by ast astronomical observation for the evolution of pre-Hispanic cultures in central Mexico. Tickets are $7 for adults. Riff Johnson's 12 gigs of um, Riffmas at Penny Lane Bar and Grill and Brewer, 6 p.m. through 9 p.m. Come help support local families by listening to Riff Johnson. And Jazz Charlie Brown Christmas at the Bangor Arts Exchange tonight at 7 p.m. The music of a Charlie Brown Christmas presented and performed live by the Heather Pearson Jazz Trio. Doors are at 6.30. Get your tickets in advance if you can. And a musical Christmas carol at the Grand in Ellsworth, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. on the Stanley Subaru stage. An adaptation of Dickens' A Christmas Carol with original songs. So that is very cool. And the Searsport District High School Festival of Trees, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. This is all tomorrow, Saturday. A $1 for one ticket, $3 for five tickets, and $5 for ten tickets. Winners will be announced on the 18th. Seed sowing workshop at Fields Pond in Holden, 9 a.m. To, through 12 p.m. It's a hands-on workshop introducing native, native seed pop propagation for growing your own wildflowers. Participants will leave with several pots sown with seeds and ready to, for maintenance. No supplies needed. And the Nutcracker at the Collins Center for the Arts in Bangor, 2 p.m. through 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. through 9 p.m. Those are two different shows. Bangor Area Youth Choir, Bangor Symphony Orchestra, and Robinson Ballet put on the annual production. And Christmas Carol Sing Along at Glenburn Evangelical Church at 5 p.m. And the Herman Baptist Choir will be joining in, so you can sing along with them. Fleetwood Mac Tribute at the Bangor Arts Exchange from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Multiple artists from all around the state play tribute to Fleetwood Mac. General admission. 
And on Sunday, December 18th, Winter Wonderland pop-up picnic at the Robbins Hill in Solon, 10 a.m. through 6 p.m., a luxury picnic, four guests per table. Each experience is one hour long. Make sure to see if this is still going on, of course, but book your slot in advance if it is. And Frozen Party at the Orno Trampoline Park from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. on Sunday. Elsa, Anna, and Olaf are back at OTP. Bring the family to meet your favorite Frozen characters. Admission is $10. The event always sells out, so advance buying is required. And Santa is at Mad Cats in Brewer, 2 p.m. through 4 p.m. Santa's coming to Mad Cats for Kids Karaoke, which also goes on 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. So that's a good one if you can't really drive. Mm-hmm. They'll probably still be doing stuff. And you can, if you live in the neighborhood, you can walk you can over. Walk over there and yeah. have some food and sing some karaoke Warm or something. up. Yeah, yeah. sounds fun. You brought fun. the uh, Christmas caroling in one of them. That's something that they really don't do a lot anymore. I know. I remember when I was a kid and uh, um, people would come to your house and they would sing Christmas carols. It's yeah. kind of neat. Yeah, I've had it happen once or twice. Good yeah. family friends. I'm so. glad they don't do it anymore in my house because... <laughs> you don't want to be included well, in Christmas alone. caroling. I would feel oh. awkward opening the door just standing there <laughs> with a group of people singing to me. It yeah. would be like, no. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You, but it's you nice. Wrap it I, li- up. I like it when people do that. Just, just don't come to my house because <laughs> I, I would feel awkward. Back with sports right after this. Okay. Bah humbug. Come bowl a few games here at Bangor Brewer Bowling Lanes. We're one of the only Candleton Bowling Alley Centers in Maine. Conveniently located in the heart of Brewer, you always have the opportunity to simply bowl for fun. However, you can also join a league. We have youth leagues, adult and senior leagues. Now don't forget, we also host birthday parties for under $100, and gift certificates are also available. Give us a call right away at 989-3798 to make reservations for your birthday party today. Fear, pain, and anxiety are all feelings associated with dental treatments, but it doesn't have to be that way. Dental lasers offer a way to remove tooth decay without using the dental drill. In fact, we do most dental fillings here at Twin City Dental without numbing, so no needle. And for treatments like root canals or having many teeth extracted, we also provide IV sedation. So call Twin City Dental for your next dentist appointment. Pro football fans, it's you pick them NFL. The Pro Football Challenge from Fox 22. Go to foxbangor.com, click on you pick them, and go to you pick them NFL. Make your picks, and you could be the weekly winner of a gift certificate from Chase's Family Restaurant in Bangor. Brought to you by Chase's Family Restaurant in Bangor, Proudy Auto Body in Dober Foxcroft, Twin City Tile and Brewer, and Twin City Tint in Brewer. Compete all season long for the grand prize trip for two to Hawaii. It's you pick them NFL at foxbangor.com. On the next Last Man Standing, Mandy's got spring break fever. I need $2,000 for my trip to Cancun. Oh, it's like we'd have it. I have a crisp $2,000 bill right here. Really? No. Honey, don't listen to your dad. We'll give you the money. You will? No. (laughs) And Ed's ex-wife is back in his life. He wants her. She wants him. I think they really love each other. Passion in a relationship is never a good thing. Last Man Standing. This afternoon, starting at 4 on Fox 22. Young Sheldon is bringing you the gift of family. I'm the glue that holds our family together. We're having a moment here. Don't ruin it. Young Sheldon. Weekdays at 6 on Fox 22. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Let's start with some college hoops. Hudson women's basketball has been rolling to open the year. At 6-3, and three, they've strung together a few wins before their winter break and are gearing up for another push at a NAC title. Ryan Sudall has the story. Hudson women's basketball is on a three-game win streak as they head into holiday break. Um, I think it's just given us a lot of confidence in like what we can do. We knew coming into the season that there were a lot of returners. Last year, the Eagles made the NAC conference title game. They were led there by forward Bailey Donovan. She's taking the reins once again in her junior season. I think Bailey's a really well-rounded player. She can shoot inside, obviously get the boards, but she can also step outside even to the three range. It's the people around me. Like What I do can't happen without them, so having a good support system off the court and on the court is what makes me the player that I am. She's just a phenomenal player. Everybody's keying on her, and she just attracts so much attention that's really opening things up for the rest of the crew. And sophomore guard Hannah Richards has taken advantage, averaging 11 points a game during the streak. The Old Town grad was a bit shy to start, 
but that's no longer the case. For Hannah, she came in and she was quiet, and now her comfort level is much better. As Hannah's come out of her shell, she has been a really big part of this team. She can do it all. She's a great all-around player. With Hannah and all other pieces coming together, the Eagles are preparing for conference play. With a 6-3 and three record, head coach Kissy Walker is hopeful they will keep the momentum going. So our whole goal is to strengthen our schedule so that it does prepare us for conference play and we kind of keep pounding into the girls telling them that you're only going to get better by playing strong competition and and so hopefully by the time we get there their confidence level will be pretty good. Reporting for ABC 7 Fox 22, I'm Ryan Sudall. Thanks for that, Ryan. Looking forward to see what the Hawks can do when they pick up conference play. Let's go to the gridiron now. The Patriots won on Monday night over the Cardinals. So a quickish turnaround this week. They actually didn't even come back to Foxborough, holding their weekly practice and preparations at the University of Arizona. They're preparing for the 5-8 and eight Las Vegas Raiders, led by a familiar face, Josh McDaniels. He took over the reins as head coach of the Raiders this offseason, and he's got a lot of weapons on offense. They've had a shaky start, though, losing a couple of one-possession games games they've held big leads in so yeah they're five and eight but it could very well be different and coach Belichick knows his defense is going to have their hands full this Sunday in Sin City. But I think when you look at him you see you know two very very explosive players offensively and a, and a great quarterback um, obviously a good offensive system really really well balanced team that's um, just you know a handful of plays away from being you know probably in double digit wins. That uh, should be an exciting one. Let's go to some high school sports now. Some action on the courts on Thursday night. We'll head to Herman for a matchup of two 2-0 two squads. The Hawks and the Coyotes are going at it. Both won their first two games handedly. How about an early rematch of the Class B North Championship? This one in Herman, and we will start in the first quarter. Hawks early. The pass from Brooke Gallup is going to go inside to Bella Bowden, and she's going to cash in on the open layup. But the Yotes were just dominant in this one. Michaela Emerson, she's going to cash the pull-up triple right there at the top of the key. She was going off all night. On the defensive end, Allie Cameron looking for two, but Sage Evans says not so fast. Great block by the junior. And then Evans with a nice save. Ball goes out to Emerson, and again, she cashes in from deep. Moving on to the second quarter now, it's Evans getting to the hole and getting the two. Old Town gets revenge. 63-27 to is the final. All right, now for some boys' action. We are going to go to Orono for their home opener, hosting Herman. And this one was all Red Riots to start. A 19-0 run capped off by freshman Brady Hughes, laying it in off of the nice feed from Pierce Walston. Herman would end the run, though, on their next possession. Another freshman, Brody Hurd, puts it in off the glass for the Hawks' first points of the game. Let's move on now to the second quarter. Will Francis picks off the pass like he did all football season. He takes flight, and he, he throws it down. Will we count that as a dunk? Either way, the young fella got up there. He is fired up. Riots up huge. End of the half, it's Hughes pulling up from three right in the defense's face. Nothing but nylon. 49-11 at the half. Orno wins 93-38. Let's go to the Bruins now. They were in action on Thursday, hosting the Kings from Los Angeles. Best record in the league for the Bees, looking to keep it going. They're up one to nothing in the second where we pick this up. Brad Marchand on the power play. He's going to rip this one top shelf. Bruins out to a two to nothing lead. They were up two to nothing entering the third. It's two to one now, and it's Adrian Kempe on the power play. That is going to tie things up past Linus Ulmark. No score through overtime, so it comes to this. Seventh round of the shootout, Trevor Moore is going to beat Ulmark. That's going to seal it for L.A. They win it 3-2. to two. And That's going to seal it for us. That's all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. Hammond Lumber Company appreciates the communities that have supported Hammond's prosperity and growth over the years. The Hammond team is grateful for the opportunity to give back by supporting local causes that sustain strong, vibrant communities throughout Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond recognizes that they could not do this without your support. Thank you for choosing Hammond as your building project partner. Hammond Lumber Company, proud to serve local communities since 1953.
come stop by Triple S Tax Shop, 315 Hamden Road, Carmel, for quality clothing and equestrian gear. Hanks Husqvarna is your full-line Husqvarna dealer with two convenient locations, 32 Old State Road in Carmel and 19 Moosehead Trail in Newport. Whether it's tractors and zero turns, chainsaws to trimmers, or pressure washers to snow blowers, everything is set up, serviced, and ready to go by our certified Husqvarna technician. And all sales are backed by our in-house Husqvarna warranty. For parts, service, or sales, stop in to Hank's Husqvarna, Carmel, or Newport. You ready? Don't, don't, there's no peeking. It's festive family fun. Window. Christmas present. Christmas gift. gift. Gift is correct. All wrapped up. No boots, no boots, no boots, no, no shoes. Boots. No shoes is correct. There we go. There we These go. are a little like Santa's helper's <laughs> shoes. In one picture perfect show. Come on, one more, let's go. It's a hat, Party it's hat. Santa, Santa Claus. Party Santa hat. Claus is yeah. correct. Dictionary. Weekdays at 10 on Fox 22. It's a blue Christmas for many consumers as Americans tighten the purse strings this holiday season. Fox Business Network's Jerry Willis has this story and more in the Fox Means Business Report. Santa's sleigh might be a little lighter this year. Retail sales falling six-tenths of a percent in November from the previous month. That's a bigger drop than analysts were expecting. Consumers are cutting back ahead of the holidays, mainly because of higher prices and rising interest rates. And it looks like a lot of people will be cutting back on their New Year's celebrations because of the same reasons. WalletHub says more than 75% of Americans expect to spend less on New Year's plans than they did last year. Investors were cutting back Thursday, too. The Dow had its worst day since September. The S&P 500 and Nasdaq had their biggest percentage decline since early last month. Wall Street was concerned after the disappointing retail sales report, but they are really worried about a possible recession as the Fed continues to hike interest rates. And finally, on a positive note, the cost of borrowing money to buy a home continues to go down. Freddie Mac says the average 30-year fixed-rate mortgage just dropped for the fifth straight week. It now sits at 6.31%. That's business. I'm Jerry Willis. Before we go, another check of that forecast. The snow already falling down in extreme southern Maine. It is. Yeah, it's moving into the state. It starts down south first, and then it's going to be up here huh. around noontime today. Wow, you're so, psychic. Well, I haven't been down there. I just looked at the radar. <laughs> oh. You know, I didn't see it with my wow. own eyes. But <laughs> This new technology we have is really blowing my mind. Radar is a crazy thing. Devin has all kinds of it, too. Here's Devin. <laughs> All righty, thank you very much. We do have winter storm warnings in effect until 1 a.m. as we head towards Sunday. A winter storm watch up until 4 p.m. Sunday for areas further to the north. That purple shade right there is a winter weather advisory that is up. And the expiration times will vary. Some places will expire Saturday morning at around 7 a.m. While areas further down toward the south and west will expire at around midnight as we head towards Sunday morning as well. And, of course, gale warnings also in effect until Saturday evening. So we'll be watching this for a while yet with snow that will begin to move in. Later on this afternoon, the evening time frame and a rain snow mixture that will be possible along the coast. Hence why that cutoff there with the alerts. But here's the system right here. With It's really getting attacked together really good. It's going to be tracking off towards the north and east as the day progresses on. Hitting later this afternoon about 3, 4 o'clock or so. Maybe even a little later than that. And then, of course, later overnight, a lot of snow on the way. If you have any overnight activities, I'd probably cancel those and just stay home. Because the snow will get heavy from time to time and accumulate pretty decently. So Futurecast currently moving. Moving forward, though, increasing clouds, pretty much a cloudy sky all day long. Later this afternoon, the evening time frame, the snow gets going. And it'll be heavy at times, too, becoming a mess with travel, with gusty winds blowing that snow around. And, of course, notice that cutoff. A rain-snow mixture cannot be ruled out for areas along the coast. And then on land as well, Saturday, we might see that rain-snow line moving a little farther to the north with temperatures that will get above freezing, but most areas should stay as snow overall. And we'll still see some snow hanging around as we head towards early Sunday morning. A lot of snow falling away. We're going to run this all the way through the entire snow events, basically now all the way through Sunday 
in early Monday morning. Some areas could see up close to 10 inches in a few areas, maybe close to 6 to 10 inches, ranging from Augusta to Bangor. Lesser amounts to the south, and some areas getting close to a foot, like over Millinocket and the Greenfield area. So plenty of areas to watch with this heavy storm that looks to move in soon. But gusty winds we're also watching out for, reaching up around 25 miles per hour at times. And along the coast, look at this, 40, 45 mile per hour winds cannot be ruled out in a few spots as we head towards Saturday morning. And we'll keep that wind going again as we head towards later into that morning period for you. Saturday, wave heights are up as a result of all this. 9 to 12 feet, according to some of the buoys, closer toward land. 14 feet, according to another buoy. So this is why we do have gale warnings in effect along the coast. We're average high is 34 degrees, and we're going to be very stable, reaching for the lower to middle 30s for the next several days, which is actually very close to average. So overall, very quiet weather pattern in the temperature department moving forward. But of course, we do have that active storm moving in later on today. Middle 30s today, afternoon snow showers so that northeast wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. As for tonight, lower 30s snow likely. Some blowing snow will be expected, and maybe to stay home tonight and be careful if you do have to be out. The northeast wind getting up to about 30 miles per hour. Moving ahead towards tomorrow, mid-30s, rain and snow likely. Northeast wind gusting up to around 25 miles per hour. And many areas could see wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour further down toward the south. Here's a look at your extended forecast. The rain and snow chances pretty much continue all the way through parts of the day on Monday with temperatures that will be in the middle 30s overall. We finally start to dry out on Tuesday. We'll be partly cloudy with highs in the mid-30s. Ah, oh, look at you. Taking control of your morning mood by starting the day with what makes you happy. McDonald's has enough breakfast options to make your mornings happy every single day. Mmm, taking control never tasted so good. Now, you can get a savory sausage McMuffin, sausage McGriddles, or golden hash browns. Choose any two for $3, only at McDonald's. ba da ba ba, -ba. Two Old Goats Antiquities and Artisans is located in Trenton. Our shop is open year-round, offering more than 3,000 square feet of antiques, furniture, collectibles, and just plain fun stuff. We are a group shop featuring 18 different vendors, each with their own style. We buy and sell vintage items, antiques, and curios. For more info, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Two Old Goats Antiquities and Artisans, 749 Bar Harbor Road in Trenton. We know once you've stopped in and seen all the great deals we have to offer, you'll be back. Want good guess? Cursed romance. Star-crossed lovers. <laughs> you better work! Deserves another. Egyptian writing. Hieroglyphics. Oh. Whoa! I felt like the person shouting wrong answers at the study group. <laughs> and another. Opposite water? Sand. 25 yeah. words or less. If you did it again, you're going home with another $10,000. Weekdays at night on Fox 22. Let's head over to the Mr. Food Test Kitchen to see what Howard has cooking up for us. Every year we get lots of questions from folks who are looking for new ways to serve seafood throughout the holiday season or on Christmas Eve. It seems like more and more of you want to change things up a bit and to introduce a little variety into your menus. Well, the good news is today we're sharing a recipe that looks fancy, is crazy simple, and is so good you'll be tempted to lick the plate. We begin by whipping up a shortcut Newberg sauce that's made by combining a can of cream of shrimp soup with some cream, a bit of sherry, and a little seafood seasoning. While this simmers, we pat some scallops dry with a paper towel and season them with salt and pepper. Now these get seared in butter just for a few minutes on each side. You'll know they're done when the scallops easily release from the pan. After placing them on a platter, we add some breadcrumbs and chopped parsley into the same skillet just to let it brown. Come dinner time, drizzle the sauce over the scallops, sprinkle on the buttery breadcrumbs, and there you have it, 
a dish that's holiday special and is made start to finish in just minutes. To get the recipe for our seared scallops with Newberg sauce, check out our website. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a fancy schmancy way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Mm. I have to agree with them in there. That one does look really good. I love scallops. Yeah. And they yeah. look so pretty on the plate, too. Yeah, yeah. Especially in that sauce. They don't stay on the plate long. Right. You know, just Right, anyway. right. A new bird feeder is on the market that can help enthusiasts learn more about the birds in their area. The Bird Buddy is a smart bird feeder that notifies the owner of a